Hi everyone, we've got a quick fluid mechanics lesson for you today. We're going to be going through fully developed laminar flow in a circular pipe and talking through pressure drop and velocity equations. So first off, we need to determine when is flow laminar in a circular pipe, right? And to answer that question, we need to check the Reynolds number. So the Reynolds number tells us whether the flow is laminar, whether it's turbulent, or whether we're in that region in between known as the transition region. So a quick recap of the Reynolds number. Um, the Reynolds number is equal to the density times the velocity times the pipe diameter divided by the viscosity. No real complexity to this equation. Uh, the biggest thing is just checking your units, keeping everything in kilograms, meters, seconds, um, and newtons. And some quick reminders. The Reynolds number is dimensionless itself, so you shouldn't end up with any units on your Reynolds number. And physically, it represents the ratio between fluid inertia and fluid viscosity. So the terms in the numerator represent how much the flow is kind of pushing through the pipe. And the term in the denominator, the viscosity, represents how much the pipe is kind of pulling on the plug of fluid that's flowing through the pipe. So taking that, um, if we calculate a Reynolds number that's below 2100, and the flow is laminar, uh, if the Reynolds number is above 4,000, the flow is turbulent, and if it's between those two values, then it's in the transition region, which means it could be laminar or it could, could be turbulent, depending on some other factors. And this is for flow in a pipe, right? If we have flow over a plate or a sphere, it's going to be different, but this holds for any flow in a circular pipe. Next thing we have to talk about is what does fully developed mean? So this comes up in a lot of problems that you'll have where it'll say, hey, the flow is laminar and fully developed, or this will be an assumption that you have to make that the flow is fully developed. What this means is that the boundary layer of the flow has a, had a chance to fully develop. Um, the rule of thumb is if you're, you're analyzing a location in the flow that's far away from like an inlet region or an outlet region to the pipe, um, from a, far away from a nozzle, um, that gives the boundary layer a chance to form. It also means you're away from region where the fluid might be transitioning from turbulence to laminar flow. So for example, if you're going from a small diameter pipe to a large diameter pipe, the flow is not fully developed at that transition point, but further downstream, it would be fully developed. So essentially, your flow is fully developed anytime it's been laminar for a while, upstream of the location that's being analyzed in the context of these problems. So now just to go through a couple equations that be useful for you as you're working through homeworks, working through example problems. Um, if you have laminar flow that's fully developed in a circular pipe, the pressure drop can be calculated using this equation. So dp over dx, that's change in pressure over change in length of the pipe, is equal to negative q times 8 times mu over pi r to the fourth. So that's volumetric flow rate times 8 times the viscosity, all divided by pi r to the fourth. Again, keep track of your units here. Everything's in meters, newtons, seconds, pascals, etc. This will give you pressure drop. The next equation is average velocity. So again, if the flow is laminar and fully developed, you can calculate average velocity as your volumetric flow rate divided by the cross-sectional area. This is a pretty easy equation. The units check out, right? Meters cubed per second divided by meters squared gives you meters per second. Um, so if, you've, if, you, if you're trying to remember this formula, just remember how the units work out. Um, it's, that's an, a simple way to, uh, to remember this formula. And then the maximum velocity Really simple, again, for the same premise, laminar and fully developed flow in a circular pipe, maximum velocity is double the average velocity. Units are the same, meters per second, and the maximum velocity is gonna be right at the center line in your pipe. Some other more complex formulas that you might need to remember um, for some scenarios, um, you can also calculate or relate the maximum and the average velocity to pressure drop. So U max is equal to negative R squared over 4 times the viscosity times dp over dx. And the average velocity is equal to negative R squared over 8 times the viscosity, all times dp over dx. The previous formulas are going to be easier if you just need to calculate maximum and average velocity. These relationships also hold. 
And lastly, some other useful formulas that you'll need. Really simple, right? Volumetric flow rate is equal to velocity times cross-sectional area, and cross-sectional area is obviously pi r squared. So you'll probably use these equations for, again, homework problems, example problems, where you have laminar flow that's fully developed in a circular pipe. We'll walk through some examples in another video. As always, leave questions in the comments, requests for other videos in the comments. Thanks for watching.